Welcome to the VMware vCenter Site Recovery Manager 5 video series. My name is Andrew Elwood. I'm a senior technical instructor with VMware Education Services. We're working our way through the installation of the and configuration of SRM. Uh, we're right now at the point where we're going to build a recovery plan. And a recovery plan is essentially the instructions or the recipe for exactly what should we do in the event that a failure occurs. Um, and some people say, well, gee, that's pretty obvious. If a failure occurs, let's fail everything over. Well, really, that depends. What was the failure? Was it that you ended up with the smoking hole in the ground and you no longer have a data center? Or was it that just one portion of your storage area network fell apart? Or perhaps your internet service provider has suffered a huge interruption on your web farm and you can no longer run in your off-site location and because the estimated time of repair of all those broken fiber cables is in the order of days and the revenue loss would be staggering. So you need to think about what exactly it is that could go wrong in your environment. Yeah, the smoking hole in the ground, a lot of us can imagine that for one reason or another. There's very few of us that live in a place where we're not subject to any natural disasters. Um, but at the same time, you also need to take a look at what, what your liabilities are. You know, what else could go wrong in your environment? Uh, and build a recovery plan to, to facilitate that. So realistically, that recovery plan is a full or partial disaster recovery recipe program. And I can have dozens of these if I want them, right? It probably doesn't make sense to have that many in a small shop, but the reality is it doesn't also make any sense to just have one. If you have just one to cover that eventuality where everything goes bad, on the one day where you can really leverage SRM when you have a small minor component failure, um, you're doing yourself a disservice because you don't have the recovery plan necessary to do that. What is contained within the recovery plan is nothing more than a list of which virtual machines are going to be uh, failed over, and that's typically based on which protection groups they belong to, so you'll include the protection groups into your recovery plan. Uh, you can then declare a startup priority order uh, for those virtual machines as well as some dependencies. So in that example that I've used in the past where we talked about the three-tier application where we've got a web, an application server, and a database server, uh, it could be reasonable for the database server to be the first item to start up. And we're not even going to try and start the application server until the database server has finished starting. So those types of things are what are contained within your recovery plan. Okay, And the administrator can get to set those precedents, right? You are the one that's in control of building all this stuff. Not only which goes into the recovery plan, but what order they get started up. Similarly, if you're in a situation where you're failing over to maybe a test and dev site where there's some developers that are working on some projects which are not considered mission critical, you could also declare in the, in the recovery plan that you would like to suspend those virtual machines uh, that are considered non-critical in order to make room for the inbound virtual machines that are considered critical, your, maybe your multi-tier application. And, and all of that information is stored within the recovery plan. So without further ado, there's more value to be learned from looking at the creation of a recovery plan than there is from talking about it. So let's go ahead and have a look at the construction of a, an SRM5 recovery plan. So now that we have our protection groups all built, the next phase is to build our recovery plans. Uh, we've established all of the infrastructure necessary to do this, so it's a very simple uh, click the link at the bottom, the left-hand side, to create recovery plan. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and have a look. Notice that under the All Recovery Plans dialog box, there already appears to be one there. Uh, that's no problem. Um, that simply means that one has shown up somewhere. And we create our recovery plans on, don't forget, on the recovery site itself. Because if the protected site were to go away and take the recovery plan with it, that would be bad. Um, so in this particular case, since we're logged into uh, site 4 and it shows us that with the local dialog box, uh, we'll simply continue onwards to step through the wizard for site 4 and build a recovery plan there. Here we have our three-tier app in our protection group. Its type is vSphere Replication, again giving us that information. You get to choose a test network. Now this is an interesting uh, dialog box. Uh, you get a, the opportunity to select a completely different network when you do a test failover from when you do a real failover. And this is very useful um, if you have uh, a situation where um, you're changing IP addresses or perhaps even worse, keeping the same IP addresses because when you run your recovery plan, the recovery or the test recovery will not actually turn off the original VM that you're trying to protect. 
And if you somehow had network connectivity from the recovery to the protected site, you could then cause an IP conflict. So here we're designating a separate uh, test network for the two v uh, networks where we assume that we're going to have virtual machines plugged in. Uh, of course, the recovery network was defined earlier. We're going to give it a name, right? Type in a, an appropriately descriptive recovery plan name. Uh, it gives you the opportunity to type in a wildly descriptive description, uh, which can, in fact, be useful, particularly if you build lots of these. Uh, when it comes time to push the big red button, you don't want to be in question at all about which particular plan you're going to run. So a good description will be helpful. So here we are. We've actually created this. Well, that's not all of it, right? Building it was easy. So we take a look at the details. We simply go to the recovery steps. So highlight the object in the left. Go to the recovery steps. And you'll see that there are nine major steps here. And in this case, we're looking down through the dialog. And, and notice that... Um, a couple of the items, it says power on priority 2 VMs and power on priority 3 VMs. How did it know that uh, the app serve and the web serve were priority 3 VMs and the database server was a priority 2? Well, that's actually something you can assign on the virtual machines tab. And we have priorities available. Notice the column called priorities next to this. If you simply select one of those uh, uh, virtual machines, and we're going to choose the DB server in this particular instance. You can right click on it, choose priority, and set the priority that you want to be assigned to that virtual machine. Now that does that for every single recovery plan that you have in existence. So if you've already got 20 recovery plans that that VM shows up in, you just change the priority in all of those. Right? Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to build out a startup sequence by assigning a priority to these. Now this isn't a dependency. This is, this is simply just a you know start priority one before you start priority two, start before you start priority three. If you also leverage the dependencies dialog box, you can then, within any given priority, tell which VMs need to start up before which other VMs and depend on those. And now when we look back at the plan, notice that there are now virtual machines listed underneath each of the power on priority one, priority two, and priority three VMs. And if you expand the dialog, you get to see the individual steps as they're listed. Okay, so pretty impressive set of tools. Well, the other thing that you can select in this environment is all sorts of other options. And the option that I'm selecting here, and I'm placing it before the power on priority, uh, actually, I don't remember which one that was, priority two VMs, it just hid behind the screen, um, is a prompt. And that prompt is going to come up in the middle of testing and during a full failover to tell the administrator who's monitoring this task to look. Go and check this out. And in this case, we're saying check the database server. And what that really means is that the recovery plan will pause and it will wait for feedback from the administrator who's running the plan until they say, yes, I've gone ahead and checked this out. It's okay to proceed with the next step in the plan. So we inserted a prompt and that's what you'll see in step six just before the power on priority two VMs. So um, kind of a nice option to give you those. The other thing that you can do is if you look above the recovery steps uh, dialog at the very right hand side of that menu is the add non-critical VM. And what that is is the ability to pause a VM that is considered non-critical. In other words, making room for other VMs to start up. In other words, you're taking away um, the resource consumption of that VM. So now that you've seen the creation of an SRM5 recovery plan, the next step is going to be to look at maybe testing the recovery plan. And we're going to cover that in the next portion of this video series. But in the meantime, if you're interested in getting more hands-on with SRM5, you can go to www.vmware.com education and search for the SRM5 install configure manage class.